Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of primarily solutions at the pre-AP chemistry level. Thanks for joining us. We're going to start with a very quick review of some things we did last semester. Now, last semester we focused on mixtures, and when we talked about mixtures, we talked about the three kinds of mixtures. We talked about solutions, colloids, and suspensions. And the key differentiation is this uniformity and the size of the particles. Suspension is the largest, so the particles will settle out upon standing, and they can be separated by filtration. The key differential between colloids and solution, the way you can tell the difference, is that colloids experience the Tyndall effect. In other words, they scatter light. And while suspensions also scatter light, you can differentiate colloids and suspensions by the separation and the filtration. Let's get some terms down. I know I'm doing this quick, but I'm assuming it's a review. The word soluble means capable of being dissolved. So soluble, whoops, new pen here, kiddos. Soluble, capable of being dissolved. Now, let's clear our screen and go on. Now, there are two key terms with which you want to familiarize yourselves. We're focusing now on solutions only, homogeneous mixtures or solutions. The dissolving medium is called the solvent, and the substance being dissolved is called the solute. Now, if it's especially solid, solid, um, typically, the solvent is the one that's present in the greatest amount. The solute is the one present in the least, with the exception of water. If you have a solid solute, regardless of the relative amounts, the water is considered the solvent. So unless it's made very clear, assume that water is going to be the solute, solvent, excuse me, water. So in this case, water is our solvent, and the solute would be salt, okay? Now, there's a whole variety, not just solids and liquids. There's a whole variety of solutions that you can have. Um, we can have a gas dissolved in a liquid. For example, in a fish tank, we have oxygen dissolved in some sort of an aqueous or water-based solvent, so we would call these aqueous solutions. So you can measure that dissolved oxygen. I actually have a probe that measures dissolved oxygen. Um, parts per million is kind of like a per percent. It's the part over the whole. You're not going to have to do any calculations. I just want to explain it in case you do fish tanks and you want to know some of these types of units. But this case, it's times 10 to the 6th. It's a part per million, 10 to the 6th being a million, as opposed to a part per 100, which is a percent. It's the only difference. Now, some people uh, think pop or soda is a mixture, a homogeneous mixture, and as long as you keep it under pressure, you've got CO2 and water, as long as you keep it under pressure and all of the CO2 is dissolved and you don't see the bubbles, then, you know, I would go with that. It's really a little more complicated than that because there's a chemical reaction occurring, but for the sake of simplifying for pre-AP chemistry, we'll consider that a homogeneous mixture of a gas in a liquid. So in other words, I'm kind of lying to you a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't know why that button doesn't want to clear. But okay. So we can have a gas in a gas as well. And when we have a gas in a gas, that's the kind of work my husband does. And here we show some gas cylinders. And this is the empty cylinder. You start to fill that with carbon dioxide. And then you add argon. And due to natural motion, the turbulence, you're filling it, that adds turbulence. The collisions causes it to mix evenly. So you get a homogeneous mixture. And there's dozens and dozens of examples of gas-gas mixtures. All right, now let's take a look at our another one, our next one. Okay, 
Now here, we've got another couple of examples. We've got liquids in liquids, and then we've got some solids in solid examples. Liquids in liquids, here this, the first one is vinegar. I wanted to show some examples with which you're very familiar. Vinegar has acetic acid in it, and acetic acid has this structure with these hydrogens and then a carbon and a double bonded oxygen and an OH group, and it's polar. And we're gonna show some drawings of this pretty soon. This polar segment can interact with water. Rubbing alcohol is isopropanol. It has a carbon and the carbon in the middle, whoops, I messed up there, sorry about that. The carbon in the middle has a, an oxygen and a hydrogen. And I'm not going to draw the whole structure, I'm just going to draw a skeleton of the, uh, the structure. It's got an oxygen and a hydrogen, and then a carbon, and there's hydrogens off of the carbons. And because of that OH group, it's polar, and when it's polar, it can interact with water. Gasoline is a mixture of a bunch of hydrocarbons. So some number of carbons, some number of hydrogens, and since they are all polar, they will mix. Nonpolar, oh, Dina. Nonpolar, they will all mix, okay? So like dissolves like, we're going to see in more detail as we continue the conversation. Polar will dissolve in polar, nonpolar will dissolve in nonpolar, right? Now, solid-solid mixtures, there's a, you know, I know a lot of you are in band, so I show some brass here. So these are brass instruments, and brass is a mixture of copper and zinc. And this shows stainless steel, and as an example is what I was really after is the stainless steel, but when I found this picture, I showed a lot of other different alloys, and so you see all these different mixtures of metals that are possible here. Um, dental fillings, this is kind of old. Dental fill fillings aren't typically uh, silver anymore, but your, your grandparents or your mom and dad may still have silver fillings. 14-karat uh, gold is also uh, a mixture. 24 karat gold is pure gold, and it's a little too soft to wear as jewelry, so we tend not to make uh, jewelry out of pure gold, okay? Now, in here, question, does everything always dissolve in everything else? No, it depends on the structures. So when we have, when it does not dissolve, we say it is insoluble. They do not mix with one another in salt. Whoop, I can't spell insoluble. Sorry about that. Okay, when it does not dissolve. For liquids, we have very special terms. When two liquids will mix to form a homogeneous mixture, we say they are miscible. So I like to say that liquids that are miscible are mixable they will dissolve in one another, like we saw before the vinegar and water, the isopropanol in water. If they do not dissolve in one another, we say they are immiscible. So immiscible are not mixable. Oil and water in your salad dressing. And here's an example I found online, uh, much like that density column that we did at the beginning of the year, so this shows carbon tetrachloride, water, and hexane, and they are not mixable as we've added them. Uh, if we'd skipped the water, hexane would have been miscible with the carbon tetrachloride. But the water is, is kind of blocking the two from mixing with one another. And when we have a density column, the one with the high density is on the bottom, and the one with the low density would be on the top. Okay, that was a quick review, so until our next video, this is, as always,